Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Maybe if he had an iron suit or a magic hammer, that would explain why you keep getting your asses handed to you. Hello, Internet. Today is, I don't know what today is, March 10th, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk movies, TVs, things that we watch and screens in front of our faces. I am Malango at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. How's it going, I Sorg? love that you start this show with such great confidence. <laughs> Nothing like uh, starting with a question mark on the date. <laughs> You know what time it is, Malengo? You know, I'll take this from the other podcast. You know what time it is? What time is it? It's Buddhist Standard Time. It's right now. Okay. We'll start with that. <laughs> then you'll never be wrong. <laughs> well, uh, why don't we ask our connection to weigh in on that, our New York connection, Mad Mike. Um, well, it's about six. That's right. pretty accurate. He, yeah. must, he must have one of those smart watches. <laughs> no, it's a it's a TARDIS watch. Oh, yes. Oh, smart watches. Are I you don't need gonna... I don't need Apple to tell me what time it is. Not for ten thousand dollars, right? Not for three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the trailer of the week. So we all we all want to watch Daredevil, oh, right? Oh, jeez, yes. <clears throat> oh, jeez, yes. Although I will say, it needs more Coolio. <laughs> um yeah i i was already a daredevil fan so i mean this didn't really do anything more for me rather than just say yeah it's coming on netflix and i'll just be able to binge watch the whole thing in about a saturday i'm pretty excited about that uh yeah, i'm super excited for this this is i'm convinced this is Marvel's birthday present to me because it's coming out two days after my birthday. So, yeah. I, the, the, like, I, I was at the panel in New York Comic Con and I got to see a little bit more of what they showed here. It it looks so good. I'm really excited for it. Um, I mean, what do you guys think about uh, Vincent uh, Delafarno? D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio, like the pizza. What do you guys think no, of him playing right. uh, Kingpin? I like him as a character actor. He, yeah, but, he's he's amazing. I I, I didn't really I know we talked about it before, but until you actually see him in the skin and the look, you don't realize that like, oh no, he's Kingpin. He's gonna be an amazing Kingpin. Because yeah, you're right. He's he's a great actor. I've loved him in, in just about everything that I've seen him pop up in. Um, it's just a tremendous actor, and and, and I think this is gonna be the thing that that uh, actually talk that convinces my wife to uh, check out the sh the show because he's she's like she's, this is like the first Marvel thing she's not been interested in, and I think it might come around on this one. Yeah, and I I mean I I'm usually kind of picky about like weird stuff. Like King Ping was this big guy who was like you know could crush. Daredevil with his hands, and it's like, I'm okay with this. Uh, yeah, and he could still be kind of like a powerful kind of character, you know, but, uh, you know, he's not just like, you know, as imposing as uh, 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 Michael Clark Duncan was, um, who I thought was also amazing in the role, you know, despite the, you know, obvious differences there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, moving on to the weekend that was the theaters in the box office. Chappie, this is kind of, I mean, Chappie got pulled in whatever we're calling first place here, right? But a very sad kind of being dragged along, it feels like. I'm telling you, most people saw Chappie and was like, oh, wait, I can watch Short Circuit instead. Right, right. Um, and also, I think it suffers from this. This is from the director of District 9. And maybe people remember that District 9, while I thought a good movie, was a weird movie. Um, mm -hmm. And this looks like it was going to be kind of along the same lines there. And I know you guys saw it on the roundtable, which is up on uh, 
on the website there that you can plug in a moment, Malengo. But is that really what it came off of? Uh, off as it was this kind of more, um, uh, can I call it human kind of feel to it, like District Nine had? Um. Yeah, I guess you could say kind of had a human. Uh, somebody actually brought up an interesting point at work. He said that in District Nine, uh, the human character or the uh, the alien or whatever the the character switches to become an alien mm -hmm. and they flip it, where now the character becomes a robot. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I feel like this guy, the director, and I'm sorry, I should know his name. I've talked about him enough. Um, I like his stuff. Uh, but this was probably not my favorite in this in this big juggernauts. Um, I put this one. I I put it Elysium District Nine and then this. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, see, I didn't know he did Elysium. I I still need to check that one out. I I think the fact that it was rated R probably doesn't help. No, because really. when you watch the commercial, it looks like you're watching a commercial for a kids movie. Right. Oh yeah, I brought up. It that absolutely point. does, and I saw this movie. This ain't no kids movie. Not even remotely close to a kids movie. If you yeah. brought your child to see Chappie, oh, I'm sorry. I'm calling child services because <laughs> you do not deserve to have your children. Wow. Yeah, it it gets it gets dark. Not quick not quickly, but it does definitely get dark. And I I was saying uh Mad Mike, I don't know if you if you saw the one moment where uh, Hugh Jackman kind of gives that face, and I'm like, Wolverine's about to, to just pull out some claws. <laughs> um, but yeah, like it was I very felt... odd to see a movie of Hugh Jackman speaking in his natural dialect. <laughs> yeah. Just in general, like like oh yeah, he's Australian. I forget yeah. this all the time. Um, yeah, I, I felt like somebody just needed to give him a hug, and that would have dealt with half those problems you know the the big story that came out of chappie were the uh the african rappers oh they bothered me on so many levels what's wrong with uh, the african rappers uh well actually like i guess like in a good spin like i think a lot of people have been now watching their vi their music videos because like they're just so is this uh, is this there. is this another one that was uh, uh based in like South Africa, kind of like a uh, district? Oh was? yeah. This okay. Was South so Africa. so they were featuring some of the local flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All but... of the local flavor sort. Oh oh yeah. The only imports are the only actors you know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> sadly. And the ones from Australia. Michelle and so. Hugh Jackman. Hmm. Every every oh and Sigourney Weaver, but and he everyone man. else. And apparently just... He Man, from what I'm seeing here. Yeah, uh, it, it was very sad that um. You could tell who weren't actors in this, and they had very prominent roles. Yeah, it, it's like if they got, like if they did this in America, Chappie would have been kidnapped by the insane clown posse. <laughs> I would pay to see that movie. I, I gotta say, uh... well, I know you would, Sorg, but I think the rest of the population. Wouldn't want to hear Chappie just screaming, "How do magnets work?" Like they don't want, they don't want that. I hate you a little right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I mean, it pulled in thirteen. You know what was funny? When I looked at that number, I thought that my uh, my uh, browser hadn't hadn't refreshed. I thought it was giving me the numbers from Monday, and I <laughs> nope, it's definitely thirteen million. That is sad. There were only ten people in the movie theater that I saw it in. Jeez. Oh well. I one of the big questions that came up on the round table was uh, are we excited about this director's next movie, which is gonna be Aliens? And um or one of the alien adaptions. And I Nope. Nope. Nope, you're not excited? This after this seeing you off. after seeing Alien Alien <laughs> You went inside, yes. And then Chappie, <laughs> I can proudly say, I will not be seeing Alien 3. See what I did there? Yeah, I'm not going to be seeing it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> because Alien and Aliens, I don't know, no one told me this, they're the same goddamn movie. <laughs> <laughs> they're the well, same goddamn of. movie, well, yes, but with yes. a better director. Oh, 
Wait, which one's a better director? Both of them are a better director? Cameron. Okay, okay. <laughs> James Cameron fake directed an Aquaman movie on Entourage that got me interested. That's how good of a director James Cameron is. <laughs> wow. wow. But uh just and I'm sorry, I I watched we'll we'll just get into this next words we're talking about. When I saw Chappie, all I saw was tropes of short circuit, but with much more cursing and violence. So it was like a South African short circuit. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. See, that was interesting because, like, the I asked the other two uh, or the other three people that I want to see the movie with that had all seen cir- Short Circuit. They and their thing was they thought Short Circuit was like happier. Like, uh, this was just completely dark. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, it was. It, it, I, I tweeted after I saw Chappie, why does the gritty reboot of Short Circuit have to have so many bad haircuts? <laughs> because, I'm sorry, I don't know if Hugh Jackman has the wig on in this movie or if they just didn't pay for a hairstylist because he looked like shit. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean, I, I think he was supposed to look bad because they're... They're telling us, like, hey, this guy's the villain. Even though he's Chew Jackman and you love him as Wolverine, he's the bad guy here. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you like the moon now. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I liked it better than I thought I would. Would I ever go see it again? No. See, I think would that. Would I buy the DVD of it? No. Yeah, I wouldn't buy the DVD. I might watch it as a red box. If it just somebody else bought it for a dollar, I was like, "Hey, this is Chappie." I'd sit down, maybe, but I wouldn't. I would not go back and see this. Like this was a one and done for me, kind of. Uh, but yeah, all right. Let's jump into the stories because time flies when we're having. Oh, fun. by the way, I saw I saw the other movie that came out this week that flopped on the uh, box office, but we'll get into that. What was the? Oh, Un- unfinished business. Oh man, that went down to number ten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The second movie was uh, the second best exotic marigold hotel. Number mm-hmm. two, that movie isn't expected to make a lot of money anyway because it's a Fox of- shirt searchlight. They, they they just as a rule they don't right. Yeah, I mean it's, I mean, it's, it's it, the independent it, movie. It has really high ratings on Rotten Tomato. I think yeah. it's pulling in like at an eighty percent, but. It's not a movie that it's yeah or whatever. Man, unfinished business number ten. That's mm-hmm. interesting. All right, uh, Zoolander two is officially set for 2016 release. Um, I kind of feel like I, I don't know. I part of me is like excited about this. So I'm like I like Zoolander. The other part of me is like this is what happens when Owen Wilson and uh, whatever his face, like, are bored with nothing to do and decide we need to make another Listen, movie. listen, you know, when you're an actor for as long as these two have been, and you've done so is. many things, you're allowed to go for the easy money every once in a while, okay? And I think uh, that's what this is. Sorg, do you know the last movie that I saw where the actors were clearly <laughs> going for the easy money? Anchorman 2? <laughs> that would be Dumb and Dumber 2. Oh, yes. Yes. I have a feeling this is going to be the same thing. Mm. I mean, the one thing that they have Only going with for Owen them, Wilson's dumb, stupid face. The one thing they do have going for them is like it's not like the first Zoolander was like a, a masterpiece of of movie whatever. You know, it it was silly. It, Neither was Dumb and Dumber, and they still <laughs> managed to screw that up. Oh, uh, jeez! Like yeah. I swear, to God, if Zoolander Two is now about him. Learning how to turn right, I'm out. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, they had a they had a quick um, synopsis of what this movie would be. Yeah, it's basically um, them having to confront the reality of the world that the world has moved on beyond them with newer, younger, sexier models oh. taking their places. Wasn't that kind of the country. first one? Oh, that just sounds awful. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Like, so, like yeah. Zoolander was struggling with that in the 
first movie. <laughs> so let's that was the entire premise of the first so movie. Let's take Zoolander and then like add a Danny Glover. Uh, Danny Glover. Uh, I'm too old for this. Yes, uh, to yes, it. Danny Glover. Danny Glover would make a great male model. Oh, oh that yeah. would be funny. I would watch that. I'd buy that. Last movie I saw Danny Glover in was that John Cena movie. <laughs> Lesnar. He's uh he was in um oh wait am I thinking the wrong person again probably you're thinking um, of the guy from Community aren't you yeah that's not right darn that's, it that's not correct at all <laughs> that's, that's not right I don't want to see Danny Glover at least in, you weren't in thinking of Sam Jackson or Lawrence Fishburne anyway what? they're not all the same <laughs> no I'm gonna hear about that in the meeting sorry <laughs> well, uh <laughs> <laughs> well I'm glad I'm not the only one that has that problem. Would we watch a live action Dumbo? What? I, what, I wait, don't think that's intended. Speaking for of us. Danny Glover, wasn't he in the live action Dumbo? <laughs> <laughs> that's Operation Dumbo Drop. Oh, okay. That's okay. Operation Dumbo Drop. Oh, geez. So basically, Disney was like, Tim, Bur- Tim Burton hasn't done anything lately. Here's a hat. What? What? <laughs> Tim Here's Burton's attached to this thing? <laughs> Oh, oh no! What was that sorry? Tim Burton's attached to this thing. Are you kidding me? No, I am not kidding you. So oh, I have a question. Uh, being that this is Tim Burton directing the live action Dumbo, <laughs> will there be scissor hands? <laughs> is, is Dumbo played by Johnny Depp, <laughs> <laughs> or is Johnny Depp simply the circus ringleader? Oh, neither, man. neither of these would surprise me. Nope. It's basically his character from uh, that really. Oh, what was a really bad movie he did last year? He's he... done every really <laughs> bad movie. Oh, uh, where he plays the Indian. That's basically just that same wardrobe. Lone Ranger? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Mordecai or any other Johnny Depp movie that wasn't Pirates 1 and 2 in the past 20 years. I did not go see Mordecai just because. It's almost the reverse effect now, which sucks for him, because, I I mean, I don't think he's a bad actor. It's just, uh, yeah, every time I see that he's going to be in a movie, I'm kind of like, uh oh. questionable. Johnny Depp may as well go full Nicolas Cage with his career and just <laughs> do movies that are supposed to be stupid. But then again, he did Mordecai, so that doesn't work either. He's not too far from that. Oh, man. Dumbo. The live. I feel like they already did a live action Dumbo, no, too. No, I don't that's think what... they did. No, no, you're thinking of Operation Dumbo Drop. Yeah, uh, I know I am. That's what, that's, what, that's what you both are thinking of, and it has nothing to do with a flying elephant. It has to do with a falling elephant. <laughs> so my wife is going to love this story, but Here we go. I do not. Chan Tatum, that guy, who was in a very horrible movie that I saw called Jupiter Ascending, that should have been Jupiter Descending, he's attached to the new Ghostbusters. Mm. Um, hold on. He's attached, attached to, to a, a new Ghostbusters because there's going to be two. Because why Ooh. not? Okay. Do we have this issue with Hercules? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is different. Yeah. This is this is Go- Ghostbusters coming out and saying we are going to do the thing. I was reading says we're going to be a franchise. We're rebooting the franchise. We're going to have several movies and other properties, including cartoons, etc. And we're already planning out for it. Dan Aykroyd is attached to this, so that could, I mean, it's Dan Aykroyd and Ivan Reitman attached to this. So I'm not terribly worried um, about this um, being in the hands. Yeah, and these are the hot people right now. Mm, Ghostbusters are not supposed to be hot, so yeah. But th- these are the the on fire people, just like like oh, th- th- at least half of the Ghostbusters at the time like were doing tremendous movies. Um, Bill Murray off of you know what Caddyshack and whatever else he was doing. Uh, Dan Aykroyd was doing some great stuff. Uh, you know it it, it it's already a proven franchise. They're going to put proven names into it to make it bigger. Um, and they got, looks like half the people attached to Marvel properties to this, which, you know, how can you go wrong there? Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to this and, and we don't know the shape of this. All right. I'm wait, Sorg, I'm holding out until the next teaser trailer. Sorg, who would be your other three Ghostbusters? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not really clear on the direction of what they're doing with Ghostbusters right now. 
And I, I can't really, and I don't think you can put like actors in and have a one to one comparison and say, oh, this is the Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray of today, you know? Um, so, yeah, no, I can't really, I, I mean, honestly, I, I think you'd end up having like a, um, oh, what's his face from 30 Rock in this thing? Uh, from 30 Super Rock. Rock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Alec Baldwin? No. Oh, no. Are you talking about um, from Loopers and uh, that, that movie? Uh, no. Tracy Morgan? Yeah, like I feel like a Tracy oh, Morgan would be in this or some other, uh, you know, like a bunch of people that came off of Comedy Central, you know? Like I feel like that's what that would end up being, you know? Because but I mean. Still, Chad and Tatum with that? That doesn't make sense. No, no, he doesn't. He, he doesn't in, in that line. You know, but again, he's a name and they think they can fit him in there. Sure. But um, but no, I agree. It, it should be like more kind of comedy. At least half of it should be comedy actors. Um, and it looks like the women's one is is kind of lined up with that. So so I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I'm reserving you, all this until we see an actual trailer or something to see what this actually is going to look like. Do you think this announcement is just based on the um, the blowback from the women Ghostbusters announcement? No. No. I think it's a, no, hey, this is the next step. I don't, I, I don't think the blowback is big enough for them to be like, you know, kind of crapping on it. You know? Okay. Because so, uh, it kind of seems like reactionary. I think like, the, no, but oh, wait, I, I wait, think... wait. You guys didn't like the all women ghost? Don't worry. There's an all guy one. We're calling it Bro Busters. It's going to be okay. I think, you know, I, I don't think you guys should be hanging on the uh, Channing Tatum thing. I think the more interesting thing is, you know, stuff like they're saying that, uh, you know, Captain America, Winter Soldiers, Russo Brothers, uh, Iron Man 3's writer Drew Pierce uh, are attached as well. And they've actually started a new production company called Ghost Course set to oversee other films, TV, and merchandise spun from the idea. So they've created the Ghostbusters version of Marvel Studios with this. So they're already like, you know, again, they have half the people attached that are in, involved with Marvel Studios that have made it so great uh, over over the years. Um, you know, they're trying to take this franchise and make a bigger thing out of it. And I'm really excited to see see other uh, known properties experiment with this new Hollywood style of thinking. I guess. Forget I, Channing Tatum. It's, it's, you can hide it's Channing bothers, Tatum. It bothers me that that we have two announced Ghostbusters movies, and I'm not particularly excited for either of them. We've had three announced Avengers movies at a time, so I... I that's They have a precedent, though. Yeah, that's true. That's there's true. No, there's no precedence for this. That's true. There's no precedent when they did Avengers, so I, I, think, I think Avengers is the precedent for this. So, um, But I don't know, that's my thought on it. Okay. Malengo? Malengo, I can't yeah. hear you. So I want to take the opportunity to talk about He-Man. This is going to be <laughs> uncharted, unnecessary humor that's going to be bad. Talk about He-Man. He-Man is speaking of things that are completely not unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> they have concept art up of, of the new Battle Cat, uh, apparently. Uh, we had a teaser logo out recently, and this is uh, the, the former Sony exec is involved with this. Uh, Devon Franklin and there's the battle cat right now if you guys are joining us on video so excited for this one um, yeah it's I'm super early about I, 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 you're not, I'm nervous about anything but I'm, I'm just I'm just excited it's happening okay I'm excited it's happening and it's not going to be a Dragon Ball Z style movie uh, like as uh, long as it looks like as long as it feels you like it's say gonna, that I mean well I it, it's happening it's on, I think it's on the right track here there's enough kind of you know that that, that looks cool. That looks cool. That, if that's going to be like this cool kind of gritty uh, he managed thing, you know, um, it's better than what they did in the 80s. You know, let's be honest I, about I, this. I, 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 I mean, listen, I've been burned. OK, I've been burned. I got Gwildor but, but, instead of Majorco. OK, uh, let's Sorg, see what happens question. here. Yes. Why, why does every reboot have to be gritty? <laughs> why? Why? Because Why does every sounds. reboot have to be gritty? Makes it look more Can't realistic. It be shiny and fun. Because if it was goofy, then it'll be like too much camp, and it'll be the Starsky and Hutch of, oh, of the really? movies. Flash is doing just fine, right? Without being a gritty reboot, right? The, uh, Iron Man is not gritty. Uh, it's not gritty. Okay. Okay. There's barely logos. any blood in it, Sorg. Okay, we well, have two logos. Yeah. We have two logos. 
So we'll we'll see what happens with this. Uh, we'll see what happens. It, with this. it have to be gritty because the the because of all of us because they never had the resurgence that Ninja Turtles did because all of us that still have our He-Man toys somewhere around here. There's a Thundercat up there. Um, are Thunder our Cat. age Thunder and I don't Dolph Lundgren is Skeletor. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren and Skeletor that he wouldn't have to use makeup. Moving on. Exactly my point. What's next, Malengo? <laughs> Uh, last story. I, uh, what is this? Empire Online released a post on 30 superhero, the top 30 superhero movies. And because of the top 30 superhero movies, I rewatched Chronicles. Uh, but yeah, this list is kind of, I don't know. I guess it's, hey, it's not 100%. Here. Some of these aren't even superhero movies. I know that's up to debate, but still. What, what, what was the top five? Uh, well, the top one. I'm Let me guess, Dark Knight. Knight. Yes, it was Dark Knight with uh, the Johnny, with uh, Heath Ledger. Um, what was uh, surprisingly, I think um, the X two was number two. Guardians was number ten. Mm-hmm. So, okay, let, let me run down here. So you were asking, uh, Mike, Dark Knight at number one. Uh, X-Men mm-hmm. 2 is number two. Number three, I don't know if I agree with that. Number three is Superman 2, uh, The Avengers at number four, and Superman at number five. I I wouldn't diverge from that too much. Uh, sounds like a DC fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a DC fanboy. That's all I'm saying. Could be. Could be. They like yes, the DC and much. Empire, apparently. Like what because we're... I'm sorry, I only saw the first page of that, and Captain America, the first one, was 25. There is no way on earth you can convince me that the Dark Knight Rises and Man of Steel are better than Captain America. Unbreakable. No at... one can convince me of that ever. Unbreakable is at number eight. Batman Returns is seven. Spider-Man. Batman is... Returns is seven. Proof, DC fanboy. <laughs> I gotta go with that. I, I I think I'm with you on that one because I wouldn't I wouldn't put that high. It's it's high. Where, where's it's, Batman and Robin on the list, Sork? Is it number five? Is for, it number four? Six? I'm looking for yeah, Batman and Robin. Pretty, pretty Blade is at number twelve. You can't tell me Blade is a better movie than than Captain America. This is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm having really good. The Incredibles at number eleven. Seriously? All right, that that's too low. Yeah. First yeah, of all, I that agree. is too low for Incredibles. Yeah. No, Incredibles think, was great. I think. Oh, oh, yeah. But, Sorry, Incredibles thinking, is no, no, no. I'm, I'm right. It should be higher on the list. I, I, I was flipping my numbers. Um, I wow, wow. Yeah, they got Winter Soldier at 13. I felt like that should have been higher up. DC fanboy. Iron Man doesn't weigh in until number 16. Oh my god. No, no, I'm I'm first, done. Especially I'm done. For the first one. Uh, this this is a quote from Kevin Smith, who is the ultimate DC fanboy. To the point where he has a podcast called Fat Man on Batman. He once said that he thought Iron Man was a perfect superhero movie. Right. Right. Like, and, and it often goes on that they have not had the perfect Batman movie. Nor yep. near near adequate Batman movie. Um, and, and he said that leading into Dark Knight uh, Rises. Mm-hmm. And so. honestly, Dark Knight gets a lot of high praise because, well, it killed Heath Ledger. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Uh, it's kind of annoying though that why do they have they have the wrong Hulk on here? <laughs> oh no! Oh, she, do, do not! All right, all right. Whoa, if whoa! Ang Lee's Hulk made this list. Oh null and void. <laughs> null yeah. and you can't void. tell me like that they, yeah. they don't even have the Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton on here. Which was a hundred times better than this piece. Yeah, then they have uh, Superman Returns at 29. Okay, moving on. Wow, yeah. All right, Empire on. Online, you're horrible at this. <laughs> and I hope you like the uh, uh, the back of the DC Universe. Uh, uh, all right, That's so. Angry. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to do a plug. A plug for The Roundtable. The Roundtable is a secondary podcast that... We produce. Uh, it spins off of the Rambling Movie Minute, and basically, it's just a bunch of people, friends, getting together, drinking some beer, uh, excluding Mad Mike because he does not live in the same state. <laughs> Yet I watch the effing movie that you guys were going to be talking about, <laughs> and uh, and then we uh, we review the movie very raw, very quickly. 
I, I think Chaffee. I think Chaffee, we we reviewed that movie within thirty or forty minutes. So we uh, straight on too much time. You gave it too much time. We let it sink in too much. Uh, but yes, you can find that show on our site. It's a new uh, the new site name, which I think is easier. It's just called Time to Ramble. And if you go to that site, uh, you can find all of the podcasts as the Rambling Movie Minute. And hopefully we will start adding other reviews and other shows of that sort. Um, all right. So what we were watching. What's the one thing this week that you guys watched? That you were like, hey, I have to tell you guys about this. Bad um, Mike. Well, I have two things to tell you about. I'm not going to talk about Chappie anymore. I saw <laughs> Unfinished Business uh, with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> um, you know what's sad? I forgot that that movie even came out. So did I, and I saw it. Uh, it it was a it was a weird weird little movie. Um. Vince Vaughn was fine in it. He was very Vince Vaughn like. Um, like if you've seen any movie of Vince Vaughn, you've seen this movie. Yeah. Uh, but Dave Franco, uh, his character. And I'm going to spoil it because I know neither of you guys are ever going to see this movie. Um, I don't know if Dave Franco's character pl- is playing someone with special needs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's it's kind of implied that he is, uh. which makes it really hard to laugh at the jokes. Oh no! It makes it no. I'm I'm not joking. Like, I, I thought it was just an odd character choice in the trailer, and that he was supposed to be just kind of dumb. But no, he actually is kind of playing someone with special needs. And it makes the movie very awkward to watch as soon as you find that out. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Is and it like the, fact a... his, the fact that his last name is Pancake does not help. Yeah, the the trailer so didn't give that off as though it was just like an up and coming like intern or somebody who like took this job out of school to gain experience. Mm-hmm. And you're saying that he mm-hmm. on top of that they add that in as well. Yeah, he pretty much is a special needs child. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I it, probably it, tur- not... it turned really awkward. Do we, I mean, so were these were these the same predictable laughs, or was it even reaching for laughs? Oh no, there are some good laughs. There are some genuine laughs. In it. Honestly, uh, wait for Redbox. Wait for Redbox or Netflix. Uh, it wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't tremendous. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't recommend plunking down thirteen bucks to go see it though. We had free movie passes, so. Ah. But uh, the other thing I saw this week, you have to see right away, uh, the new Netflix series, The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah, I need uh, to see that. It's a series by Tina Fey. It's thirteen episodes. Um, the theme song will be stuck in your head forever. Uh. It's it's really really good. Uh, there are a lot of new terminology that you will learn. Uh, hash brown no filter. You will learn a new way to say goodbye. <laughs> there, there's just so much stuff. Uh, it basically, it's a tale of four women who were kidnapped when they were 14 and locked in a bunker for 15 years. So when they get out, they they um, act like it's 1998. And all the references are thusly, which is fantastic. Oh, this sounds like fun. Mm-hmm. It's super. It's super great. Um, there, there are several MC Hammer references. Uh, <laughs> there's a story about curing someone of their Hulkamania. It's there's a lot of really good stuff in there. <laughs> a lot nice. of really good stuff. And there's some really great cameos in it too that you wouldn't expect. But yeah, definitely, definitely go watch it. Nice. Um, oh, and I, I also saw End of the World, uh, second episode, which is still really good. I like it a lot. Uh, Last Man on Earth. Last Man. Not Last End Man on Earth. Earth. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna jump in on that because I also saw Last Man. I started watching that, and um, I think I'm caught up. But without giving away spoilers, mm-hmm. it started off. It started off. I thought rather slow. But I was like, I'll just stick with it. And now to where it ended, I am 
I'm kind of interested to see how this is going to work out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I'm so excited for how... For, for the way the, the last episode ended, it truly caught me by surprise, and I'm like, oh, we're doing this. Okay. <laughs> so it, it keeps making me... It's like they wanted to do um, that that why the last man or whatever. And like, they just, it couldn't get signed off by the networks. And this is what it became. Like, I don't think we're going to see another male character. Well, no, because then the title would be a misnomer. Yeah. So I I think we're just going to keep seeing, (laughs) I mean, where it's at now, it's amazing. Uh, So yes. Um, Also, I started the second season of broad city. I'm four episodes into nine episodes. Oh, the, I think it's the first episode or the second one, uh, Mad Mike. Which one had the, the Jewish people on the train? Was that the first episode? I believe that was the first episode. Oh, my gosh. It made me miss New York so much. Mm-hmm. It was hilarious. Uh, I love that show. That Somebody had the argument that that is probably the funniest show on television right now. That, and, that was me. That was yeah. me. <laughs> and I, I, I still think that. I would I would second that. Um, I saw Exodus. Uh don't go see Exodus. It's bad. <laughs> even like the, I could have told you not to go see Exodus. Even like the big buildup, besides the fact that they got white uh, actors to play the two leading roles, or more than the, there are a lot of leading roles that they gave it to white people. Uh, besides that, even the big epic like uh, scene where the water parts, that just I don't I don't get it, and made me sad. And like I said, I rewatched Chronicles, and I like it. I like Chronicle a lot. That was a good flick. I'm kind of waiting to see when they do the second one. I don't know if you're going to get that now. Yeah. I don't um, know if we're going to get Chronicle 2. Uh, Sorg, you watched, you finished? Mm-hmm. No. I finished Legend Dude, of Korra so. Season 2. Season 2. Uh, well, and I guess the end of we I finished off Season 1 and 2. Uh, has started four the weekend seasons, before. right? There's four, four seasons. Only two are available on uh, Amazon Prime right now. Um, whoa, Dinkle, where did that um, come from? Um, um, Anyways, um, but uh, this one uh, got more into uh, you know, of course, the first one was was you know in the city, and this one got a little more into the the spiritual side of world. Avatar yeah. that you actually kind of find out why there's avatars, which I thought was mm-hmm. interesting enough, and. Uh, so it had a whole different feel to it than the first one, uh, you know. It, it, you know, a little different than the than the the first series where you got you know the 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 more uh, 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 elements based uh, side of things. So yeah. um, you know, but it was a lot of fun. And like I said a different kind of feel to it. Uh, the, and like I said, you actually got kind of the origins. You revisited a lot of things from the first Avatar series too. Um, so it was really nice for that. Uh, it was like, wait, I, I think I remember that owl thing from a thing. Cause it's been so long ago since I've seen Avatar, uh, to the point where I kind of want to go rewatch it. Cause I feel like I really feel like it, it's a series that is kind of worthwhile, uh, to go back and watch again. So, Oh yeah. Um, just... I rewatched the last season or the last book mm-hmm. of the first avatar and it holds up amazingly well. I, I, I cannot think of another cartoon that, that holds up to this, this point. You know, Batman um, what's that? Oh, yes. Batman, 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 Batman does. Superman was, uh, is, was holding up pretty well. I, I got through the season, three seasons of that a couple weeks ago. Um, Cowboy Bebop is still pretty good, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as far as like a recent one that really kind of was like, wow, that's like not just for kids, you know, um, and not, not for content, but for kind of uh, complexity, I guess. Um, you can really. Young Justice it. is actually pretty good in that regard. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you know, something that's not a superhero thing, you know, that's, that's okay. bringing that to life. Like this is a, this is like an original concept, you know, and you don't get that much anymore. Um, we we get excited when we see adaptations of Flash and Young Justice and stuff in Justice League and our movies, you know. But what when's the last like kind of just full on? This is a new thing uh, that we really really got into, you know, the way the kids are getting into SpongeBob, I guess. Um, Archer. Archers, Archers one, yeah, yeah, but but again, but not as you know, it's not as technically interesting as this one is. So, anyway, so that, that's me. I I, I want to see if I can get a hold of the other seasons. I don't know, see if they're coming on Netflix or something. They're like thirty bucks a pop, so I don't know if I'm going to drop Ooh. that for two more seasons of Korra. So, uh, but uh, th- definitely worth it. Check it out. It's on Amazon Prime if you happen to have that. Um, and I I think they they throw episodes. The first a lot of the first season is on the uh, Nick 
Nickelodeon app right now, which you can actually um, also Chromecast. So, and you get more if you happen to have, I am sure there's more on demand and stuff too, if you have cable. So, um, because you have to unlock with your cable provider to get a few more episodes in the app. So, uh, definitely recommended. Cool. All right. So, uh, real quick, the final thing coming out this weekend, um, this weekend is not a Cinderella night and day Cinderella. That movie, surprisingly, uh, Cinderella is holding at a 89% right now. Uh, Cinderella is going to make huge money and you want to know why because it's disney and it's no Cinderella. no it has nothing to do with the movie you want to know why malengo because nothing else is coming out this week no nope <laughs> two words two words frozen short uh that's it all you need to sell it it's the only way you're gonna get to see the frozen short is if you go see cinderella that's sad yeah yeah. Whatever. Good for them. Okay. Uh, Malenko, ask me the reason I'm being asked to go see it this weekend. Why are you being asked to go see it you this weekend? You lost the bet? Frozen short. Oh, gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I would say for the men out there, Liam Nielsen does it again oh. in Run Away or Run All Night, where he yeah, basically they they were stopped advertising messing this. with his family. Yes. Nobody's just missing stop. in this movie. Stop. Just stop messing with his family. Um, he will find you. <laughs> the the one interesting thing is right now on Rotten Tomato, the I think I'm going to say this wrong, but the Cobbler is at a zero percent. Adam Sandler decided to release a movie this weekend, guys. Oh wow, zero percent. Yay! Is this 0%. so? Is this is this not part of his Netflix deal? Is this the last one? I I would hope so because. He should just be pushing everything to Netflix and taking whatever money he gets from there. Well, is, he's got uh, Pixels coming out later this year. And this so. is also like like this is something called Voltage Pictures, so it's like some kind of independent thing. Um, yeah, because he is his happy man. So it's, 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 it's coming to U.S. theaters and on demand in March 13th, so it's like not even a full theatrical thing. Um, so this is like the goofy things that WWE Studios was was doing for a while there, where they're straight to DVD. <laughs> so I mean, th- this is these aren't. These aren't theatrical movies in the way you think they should be that will appeal to everybody when you see movies like this. No. So, Cinderella and, is probably going to be the biggest. Rotten Tomatoes is going to rail on stuff like that. So I mean, yeah. it, I, I, I want to say that doesn't mean that you should uh, completely avoid this, um, but at least it's easier for you to check out. Than go no, theater. you should completely avoid this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we I, find I really, you? I really, you, you, I, some, we're gonna have a throwdown one of these days, Malengo, because your your dependence on the box office at Rotten Tomatoes to tell you what to watch is really concerning to me. And, Do you know, uh, and, I usually, I in my defense, I usually hold my ground. I will ch- sometimes check Rotten Tomato, whoa, this, but I will go oh, see a trailer, movie that still way, gets bad rating. This trailer got really sexy off air, by the way. I want to what turn did? that off. That the collar trailer it got really, really racy. Um, <laughs> hello. Um, anyways, uh, but no. Anyways, yeah. Hi. Um, I'm yeah. at Sorgatron. Cobbler makes me feel good. Is that, is that? Sorgatron.com. <laughs> Sorgatronmedia.com is where everything else is. Uh, please check out, again, like you heard at the top of the show, our, our friends at SliceOnBroadway.com that support this good podcasting with pizza uh, in Pittsburgh. Um, and they're in the uh, South Hills in, in uh, Carnegie, PA as well. So um, lots of stuff going on. If you haven't checked it out, Sawtooth Willie episode four came out this week. Learn how to make friends with cats in the subway system um, and other fun yeah. tips from the uh, first hobo series from Pittsburgh. Um, Sorg, are you sure those aren't just undersized rats? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. What about you, Mike? Uh, well, you can find me at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter machines. You can also find me as the new boss of the Wrestling Mayhem Show tonight on SorgatronMedia dot com. I am the boss, and I will be taking He su- he has he has uh, 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 donated to the Patreon at Patreon dot com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show because <laughs> we have something going on with our uh, special contest going on tonight. So I look forward to uh, the the midget ladder match that you're going to be inserting into the show. Um, <laughs> Who said anything about midget sword? <laughs> wow. I might actually have to watch that episode <laughs> just to see what happens. You can find me on Twitter at Rambling Mango. Also, definitely uh, subscribe to our Facebook uh, group page uh, at the rambling movie minute uh where we like to post up all kinds of fun facts and stuff 
Um, but yeah, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. And until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. But up, but. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.